Hey everyone, welcome back to Model Railway Fantasia. How are you doing? I hope you're all well and keeping your chins up in this recession. <laughs> so uh gonna just quickly update you on a few things. Then I'm gonna show you some other bits and pieces and then kind of gonna do a small review on this DP2, which is a development project two, and why I came across it, why I decided to buy it, don't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway, and we'll come on to that sort of towards the end of the video. So, personal stuff first. The house that we was putting an offer in backwards and forwards, we finally come to an agreement and we got a whole bunch of paperwork to do and more details to follow. So, I'm quite excited. No, not quite excited, I'm really excited. So uh, it's uh, getting all this paperwork done first. And um, as regards to my operation, still haven't had a date yet. I'm hoping it'll be soon so I can just get it done and out of our way with and kind of move on with my life. So let's show you a few bits first of all. And I will come on to the story about how I came onto that DP2 shortly and why I brought it. But while I was looking for that low cone, like I said, oh, I'll go through the story in a second. I came across one, two, three at Rails of Sheffield, double deckers. There's seems to be because I already had those two, they're slightly different shade. And if you look, and we will give them a run in a second, you can see like the DR's quite sort of prominent on that one and the signs on the side. And slightly different on this one. You see the same mold castings and sort of around the windows you can see they've got that silver lining which really looks sort of stands out and not on those ones. So this is the more sort of updated model. You see they're quite closely coupled, got different couplings on them, and there's a bit bigger gap on that one. I said I did have those two, I'm just going to crash into everything, come past. There was a control coach as well, but I already had a control coach, so it wasn't, wasn't really worth me buying another one. But yeah, we'll give it a quick, quick blast into the platform shortly. But just let me show you some other stuff and then we'll come on to the DP2. So I've been fairly busy the last week or two I'm still not not even close to being finished this uh, is a Fala um, obstacle course and it was was is pretty fiddly blinking kit and you know forget my physical situation it was just it was really pain in the backside to do but I'm getting there some of I've painted, I've run out of paint basically, so you can see sort of like there they need painting the the barriers. But I've already painted some of it. Same as that. Well, that's there was a wires that go go across, but I've swapped them out and put string just because those wires are just real pain to sort of you know get straight. So that's like a kind of a uh, sort of crossing obstacle. I've got one at the back needs painting. Again, another sort of crossing obstacle. We've got the tunnel sort of obstacle here. We've got a little wall obstacle. Again, big wall obstacle, which will basically go, um, just trying to find where it is. It's that one there, because it's different three wires that go through that and he's painting as well and this one is going to be kind of like um you know a single wire it's going to be a sort of a death slide kind of thing i've got some barbed wire stuff to to get i'm gonna have a little bit of a sort of marshy ground with uh these sort of floating kind of bridge type thing going across the, the sort of marshy area so a bit, a bit of resin and 
all sort of marsh weeds and all that sort of good stuff. I'm thinking it was going to look quite good. I got a, uh, I'm not going to mention the company's name, but I got this old car um, loading ramp, which I've smoothed down, I've converted, taken all the bits and pieces. So it's basically all it's got now is just a set of steps onto the loading platform for the railhead part, which again, it's going to be quite good. I do, I'm just going to spin you around. I've got the piece of wood, it's behind there, it's eight foot long, so it's, it's a really long piece and plenty of scope to, to do obviously the base, the rail head, the obstacle course and the training ground for where I'm going to put those tanks and crossing the river and stuff. So should be enough room for all that stuff on that one board. I just need to put on the, um, you know, the, the beams across and strengthening pieces and make it into a proper board so i'm probably going to need help with that but i have turned this let me just zoom out a bit i have turned this on its side for now this is not really you know apart from putting the trees on there's not really much else i can i can do on this section for the minute so uh I'm just going to come back a bit more just show you so i've got a nice sort of working space i'm gonna to have to do it on the floor here which is fine i've got cushions and hopefully i can get from all four sides with ease and it should be ready for transports so i am really looking forward to um to doing this next action uh, i think it's gonna you know, i got i got a lot of ideas like I said, a lot of them I'm not going to tell you about just quite yet. I am going to try and do as much as I can on camera. And hopefully you'll see the, you know, most of the build of me doing it and all the rest of it. So let's get on to this little beauty. Now, for a while now, I was thinking I, I wanted a green locomotive. It had to have not many markings on it, if any. It had to be a strong locomotive to pull because I've got, you know, there is four, there is three, and there is another three wagons. And these 3D printed um, wagons, they, they actually weigh, you know, for what they are, they actually weigh a fair bit. So it needed to be quite a strong locomotive. Yeah, I could do a double header and all the rest of it. But I wanted it sort of green just so it fitted in with a the whole theme like you know so there was a couple of options i could have um sprayed up a locomotive green wouldn't have been too much of a drama i could have done that but then what you know what locomotive would i do and you know how much was i willing to spend so i just wanted i would look if it was i wanted a really i wanted a class 37 was what i was looking for there was a couple on there. Um, there was a Hornby TTS for 150 quid. That weren't going to happen. So there was also a Backman, I think, for about 130. But again, it had the British Railways logo on it and everything else. And I was just like, mm. you know, uh, it could be a case of removing the signs or giving it a respray again. But then I spotted this. I was, like I said, I was just looking through if there was anything of interest because Rails had a sale on. Hence why I got those three double deckers. Their, their fancy 15 sale. So I saw this and I was like, hmm. It was a bit of a, a weird description and stuff. And it said it had sound and all the rest of it. I have done some research on what a DP2 is. A DP2 was basically the the footplate for the class 50s that came about sort of after this. And this basically was built in 1962. And in 1967, it hit a cement train. Uh, seven people sadly lost their lives up in Thursk. 
And um, yeah, it's basically, you know, got scrapped in 1970. The parts were taken off. I think the engine first went into Royal Oak, which was a class 50, and then into uh, Illustrious, again, another class 50. So this was basically a development project for the class 50. I like it because it didn't have much markings on apart from the DP2. I liked it because there's not too much fine detail to actually break off. I put in a European coupling on there. On that end, I'm going to probably have to take out the coupling on the other end. This is a Silver Fox model. I'll just show you that it's got the English or the UK sort of type coupling. And I think it's got, for me, plenty of detail. Yeah, more than enough detail for what I want. You know, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's actually a Deltic. There was a bit of um and ah in about, because it's on a class 37 chassis, chassis and um, it's got sound, as you might have seen on the shorts. But it is a silver fox model. I'm slightly disappointed. I think the roof fan could have been a bit more detailed, you know, or molded a little bit better. And the same with the exhaust there. You know, I know silver fox is a small sort of company, but the rest of it, you know, you can see all the door sort of details and everything else. I think it's really nice. Yeah, overall, it's not a bad model. I think the the roof is a little bit too light coloured. It probably could do a darker grey. I may in the future spray that up. And um, yeah, there's not a lot I can do about the roof van and stuff, but the the roof I think sort of let the actual model itself down. It does have a sort of weird sort of um, sound setup. I'll put it on track in a second and I'll show you. I know you may have seen the short and stuff, but I just want it, you know, it doesn't really have a startup, you know, like on, on sort of the other locos and stuff. But I, I wanted a nice strong loco basically to pull these 10, 10 wagons and, you know, they are quite heavy once you've got the, the vehicles on there and stuff. And I think this is just the job. It's green, so it'll fit in with the army. Um... Yeah, I know I'm doing sort of predominantly Polish-based layout. But, you know, as I always like hearing Anthony Dodge say is, it's your layout. If you like something, just have it. You know, you know, sod the rivet counters. It's your layout. You do what you want. So and I'm, I'm totally in agreement with that, you know. It's my layout and I'll do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> so... I bought it. It's it really isn't actually a nice loco, so I'm going to go and put it behind these M113s. I'm sure you'll see a, a short with that as well. I quite like doing the shorts. It's you know 15 seconds and it's job done, like you know. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the sounds. We'll give it a quick run and then we'll just moving some stuff out of the way, and then we'll run the. Yeah, just show you the double deckers basically in motion and that'll be it for this sort of update and as and when i have news i'll let you know so let's give this a start up so it is a silver fox model but the chassis is a backman let's see if we can uh let's put the functions on shall we there we go So it, it gets straight into the to the startup on this, which is new to me. So I'm just going to run it with those two. It doesn't have lights. So I'm just going to come back a bit now. 
Marcus. But that's basically what I bought it for, is to pull this military train, because it is going to be quite long. Really nice sound to it. Also, I think the only th thing that lets this down is the roof details could be a slightly better and um, because it's basically on a backman chassis it doesn't have lights which is a shame but I think it fits in perfect for the military train So I'm just going to stop this little beauty just there. It's quickly becoming right up there with one of my favourite locos. It's really nice. I know, I mean, I didn't buy it to go on any sort of passion. I purely just bought this just for the, to haul the, the big rake of military vehicles. But let's just give these double deckers a try and then that'll be it for today. It would help if I just put some power on, eh? Let's just give these... These double-deckers a, a quick run. Oh, and we've stalled. That's because that track's dirty. So I just switch tracks because I haven't used those tracks in forever in the back. Just because I've been, I'm doing that other stuff. So I'm just going to give you. I've, I've taken a coach out. I'll just give you a, a quick run of this, and then we'll call it a day. Like I said this this loco wouldn't be pushing this lot, but it's out and it's to hand and it's new. It's always nice to play with a new toy, isn't it? I'll let you enjoy the sounds for one last time. As I said, I will be cracking on with the scenery on this next module.
sorry folks that's it for this update I hope you've enjoyed seeing a DP2 um, like I said it's, uh, it's your layout you do what you want so I'm pretty happy with these purchases and I say hopefully we'll have something down on the board to show you on the next one it's just slow going with those obstacle course items So that wraps it up folks, thanks again once for watching and I'll just turn this sound off and um, yeah I'll, I'll see you soon once I get all the, the board up and running and this place you know suitable for me to work. So I'll see you soon folks, thanks very much, bye now.